Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be creating our very own custom confetti brush in Photoshop. And not only will we create it in Photoshop, but I'll also show you how to take any shapes that maybe you made in Illustrator and bring them into Photoshop and create a brush out of those as well. And I'll show you how to adjust scatter settings, rotation, color, all kinds of really cool adjustments that can make for a very, very customized brush. And just to give you an idea of what this tutorial will cover, I'm gonna show you what the final outcome is right now. So I'm just gonna grab, this is one of the brushes we're gonna be creating. And as I brush with it, you'll get to see, we get to create some really cool effects and colors. So it ends up being really fun and you end up getting pretty addicted to it, I did. So I had a bunch of these before I started recording. Um, but anyways, so not only this one was, uh, a brush that I created out of shapes that I made in Illustrator, but um, we're going to start with just creating a basic circle confetti brush in Photoshop. So let's just dive right in. Uh, I'm going to create a new artboard and I'm going to go file new. And I'm just going to be working with a two inch by two inch artboard, uh, but absolutely feel free to use whatever size that you want. I'm keeping mine at 300 PPI CMYK because in my mind, I'm imagining this being on an invitation, which would be printed. So that's why I'm keeping my color mode at CMYK. So just hit okay. And now we're gonna begin. Um, this is probably what your color looks like. So we're kind of matched up right now with our screens. And we're just gonna create a very basic circular confetti brush. And we're gonna do this by creating a new layer first in our layers palette over here. And then I'm gonna grab my brush tool and I'm gonna select, everybody has these brushes right here. So I'm gonna select a hard brush. So just make sure your hardness is at 100%. And then let's see what the size looks like. You can use your open and close bracket keys on your keyboard to either make it smaller by hitting the open bracket key or the close bracket key to make it larger. So that's how I'm increasing and decreasing as you see me, you'll see me do in this tutorial. So th those are the two keys that I'm hitting. So once you're happy with the size, we're gonna come over here and I'm just gonna change the amount of gray uh, that all of these circular shapes are that I'm gonna be making. And all I'm gonna do is just click once. So I'm just making some random circles and then maybe I make a little bit of a smaller circle and I'm just gonna change the amount of gray. So I'm gonna go for a lighter gray here and this will just give my brush a little extra tonality in it. So that looks good. So this is gonna be my first brush. And the important thing is, is just notice that all of this is on the same layer. So I'm gonna come back here, grab my selection tool and go edit and choose define brush preset. And once you click that, I'm just gonna do simple circle. All right, so now I'm gonna turn this one off and we're actually just gonna begin brushing with it. So I'm gonna create a new layer to brush with. So I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard and then I need to select the brush. And I'm gonna be working in the side palette over here. So you need to open up your brush palette over here, which is different than over here. So you can get to that by going window brush. And this will pop up over here and we need to grab the brush that we just made. And if you come over here to brush presets, if you scroll all the way down, depending on how many brushes you have, this is the brush that we just made. So that's pretty cool. And you can still uh, size it using your open and close bracket keys because these are all together now as one brush. So once you um, have your brush selected, you're gonna come over here to the brush tab. And this is where we do all the fun stuff. This is how we kind of preview all the different um, add-ons that we're gonna put, uh, apply to this brush. So over here, I'm gonna choose color dynamics and I'm gonna make sure this is checked right here. This is very important, apply per tip. That makes sure that your color is ever changing as you're scrolling along. You always want your smoothing checked, or I do anyway. Um, and then let's see. That looks pretty good for now. We wanna scatter it a little bit. See how this preview changes down here when I check the scatter? So see how this is pretty boring when you paint along a path, it's gonna show this repeating 
This makes it a little less obvious that it's one brush that keeps repeating, but as you can see, there's still some areas that are repeating right here, so we wanna avoid that from happening. And you can change that by kind of toggling a few of these switches. So this is just for color right here. You wanna make sure that you've got your scattering selected. So this is the amount, this is the percentage of scatter. And as I scroll ahead, you can see they start separating, and I do not want that to happen. I want it to be subtle, but not like this. So let me make it a little, little wider of a scatter. This is the amount of um, how many times this brushes in one kind of fell swoop. You can see it, it doubles um, as you go up and count and it, it just gets crazy from there. So I like keeping it at one or two for this particular brush. I'm gonna keep it at one. And to avoid this kind of repeating right here, the last thing that we can do is come over here to Shape Dynamics and over here we can change the angle and you can see that they begin to rotate. So that avoids that repeat a lot. Um, when you start seeing repeats, I would always come over here and change my angle jitter. And this is the roundness jitter. So as you can see, um, if I bring it down to zero, I'm having complete circles in my preview, but as I adjust it, it becomes more of an oval. Um, but at the same time, when you paint with it, it kind of looks like falling confetti in a way. So I like having a slight roundness jitter to mine. The next thing to know is when we're in color dynamics, see how this has foreground background jitter? I like keeping mine right around 50%, and what that means is the color, uh, the outcome as you're coloring, is going to be dictated by this foreground color and this background color. So we wanna make sure we have two colors that we like um, right there. So I'm gonna choose a blue, and then I'm also going to choose a purple. And now when I brush with it, I'm gonna get more blues and purples in mine, and I can make this a little smaller. Um, or just to show you comparison, if I chose like a red and a yellow, you'll be able to notice the difference um, in my outcome when I paint with it. I have more reds and yellows versus blues and purples. So that's how to create um, a confetti brush just in Photoshop, just using actually a brush to create a brush, which is kind of funny. But this is what it really comes down to is adjusting your settings here. So if you don't see an outcome that you like, come back to your settings and edit your settings in here until you're happy with the outcome. All right, so we're gonna put those away and now I'm gonna show you how to take shapes that you created in Illustrator and bring them into Photoshop and create a brush out of those. So I'm here in Illustrator and here's the confetti that I drew up. And as you can see, I've used different shades of gray right here just so I can punch up that tonality a little bit more. You can keep it all one color if you wish, but in my experience, I've always had better outcomes when I kind of mix the shades of gray. So I'm just gonna select everything, Command-C or Control-C on a PC to copy, come into Photoshop, and then paste Command-V or Control-V on a PC. And I'm gonna paste it as a smart object, and then just hit Return or Enter. And now, same steps as I did before, I'm gonna come over here and go Edit, Define Brush Preset, and um, let me do square confetti. All right, so now I'm gonna hide this layer, create a new layer, and now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard to activate my brush tool, and you can see my old brush is currently selected. Now I need to select my new brush, which is at the very bottom of this brush presets panel. And then I'm gonna come over to brush. And as you can see, this is the preview right now, and that is not looking that good. So this is where we change everything up like we did before. So first things first, I don't wanna change my shape dynamics like I did for the circles because I don't want a different roundness jitter. I like the shape that I have and I don't want that to change. I could change the angle jitter, but we'll hold off on that until we see if we're happy or not. And one thing I, I didn't mention for the previous one, we can do a size jitter so it'll uh, alternate in sizes as you um, begin to brush with it or paint with it. So we can, we can play around with that a little bit. Let's bump that up to 50%. And then we're gonna come to scattering again. We want a nice scatter, but not too far. So I'm just watching this little preview down here to make my decisions. I'm gonna keep the count at one because I think two would be too many. Yes, definitely too many. And then I'm gonna come into my color dynamics and I'm gonna make sure when I'm in my color dynamics that apply per tip is 
selected. My foreground background jitter is set to around 50%. And then I keep my hue jitter around 50%. And you can do really whatever you want with saturation jitter. I like keeping it more on the high side so I have more vibrant colors. Uh, coming through if I had my saturation jitter closer to zero I would have a lot more grays than colors So I like keeping that pretty high and then your brightness jitter you can have wherever Okay, so let's see what this looks like. I'm just gonna make my brush a little smaller and That's pretty cool, but as you can see because I've got that size jitter on I've got some of these that are popping forward So I actually I don't think I really need that so I'm just gonna turn that one off completely so let me create a new layer and let's see how that looks. There we go. And as you can see, I can come over here and I can change once again. I can come and pull a blue for my foreground and maybe another, um, maybe a pink for my background. Let's create a new layer and see what this color combination looks like. Remember, if you don't like the different colors that are showing through, you can come over here to your color dynamics and just adjust some of these settings. So that's a quick and easy way to create your very own pattern brush in Photoshop using Illustrator or just Photoshop, whichever you're more comfortable with. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and make sure you to head on over to my blog every-tuesday.com for more design goodies and tutorials. And I will see you next week.